Now, today is the last Sunday in the month of September. Is that right? Yes, sir. Praise the Lord. And throughout the month of September, we've been dealing with spiritual gifts. Amen? What are the spiritual gifts? How do you receive the spiritual gift? Why do you need spiritual gift? Praise the Lord. And we've been dealing with that. And next Sunday is Super Sunday. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And it's going to be a wonderful Super Sunday. Amen. Praise the Lord. So while we continue to deal with spiritual gifts and receiving gifts from God, not only spiritual gifts, God also gives physical gifts. Amen? Because there are people that said everything they talk about is spirit, spirit, spirit. So I'm only human. I need human blessings. So don't worry about that. Today, we are going to talk about how to receive anything from God. Amen? What did I say? Anything, how to receive anything from God. Remember what the Bible tells us in the book of James, that every good thing and every perfect gift comes from God. Praise the Lord. And so when we are talking about receiving from God, we're only talking about concerning good things and perfect things. Praise the Lord. God only gives good things. I want you to understand that. God only gives good things. Praise the Lord. He doesn't give bad things. He doesn't give sorrowful things. God only gives good things. Say, my God only gives good things. My God only gives good things. And so if you have something that is not good in you, around you, well, it is not of God. It is not of God. If you've got sickness in your body, and some people say that maybe God is punishing them for their sin, or God is trying to humble them. God does not use the weapon of enemy to humble his children, because sickness is of the devil, praise the Lord. And so when we talk about receiving from God, we are talking about every good gift. Amen. So, now, first, when you talk about, you have to deal with the basic thing. Does God know you? Do you know God? That may sound strange to you, but if you do not belong to a family, you have no right to the wealth in that family, true or false. Praise the Lord. If you don't belong to a family, if you are not in that family, you have no right to the privileges by assumption. You don't become a Christian by thinking that you are born again. Amen. God has set out a clear way for you to join his family, in God's family, full stop. And if you are not in God's family, you have no right to the privilege and to the wealth in that family. So I want you to make number one note that the key to receiving anything whatsoever from the Lord in terms of the blessings of the Lord that makes rich without any sorrow, you have to first accept his terms and join his family and be born again. Praise the Lord. And as we progress in this service, you will have opportunity to be born again if you are not born again. So you can already make a note on your note that today, when pastor makes the altar call, I want to join God's family so that I can have access to all the wealth that God commands. Praise the Lord. So that is number one. That is a fundamental thing. Paul said, I do not want you to be ignorant concerning spiritual things. I also do not want you to be ignorant concerning physical blessings. The Bible tells us in Hosea 4, 6, he said, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Praise the Lord. So you need to be part of God's family. To Come on. If somebody is going to give you something that he doesn't have, then it is a fake, isn't it? Is it not true? So the question is that if God is going to give you anything or everything, does he have them? Do you have evidence that God has these things? Well, if you go back to Genesis chapter 1, the Bible said in the beginning, God made. Amen? 
God made the what? The heavens. And what? That is a foundation. God made the heavens. God made the earth. Now, I suppose if you make something, that makes it yours, isn't it? Is that not true? And you can see from the beginning of the word of God that everything, the heaven and the earth, he made it. Whatever is on earth, whatever is under the earth, whatever is in the heaven, God made them and had access to them. Praise the Lord. In Haggai chapter 2, he says, the silver and the gold are mine. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Now, people are digging for silver and gold and for coal everywhere. But God says, God says, the silver and the gold, they are what? Not the one in Nigeria. Not the one in Europe. He says, whatever is called silver and gold, God said, it belongs to me. He said to David, the cattle on a thousand hills, they are all mine. Amen. When God talks about his prosperity, it is belittling to him because we talk, we can only comprehend the prosperity of the Lord with our senses because of what we see here. Amen. We can only try to understand because of our limitation, we can go beyond what we can see or can think or imagine. Amen. But God is richer than your imagination. Did you hear what I just said? God is what? Richer than your imagination. So, if you look at all the wealth in the world, and your imagination stops there, all the wealth in the world, your imagination stops there. Beyond your imagination is the beginning of God's prosperity. After you have checked all that you can reason, all the silver, all the gold. You know, somebody told a story that it was a comedy, actually. He said that a man died and he was going to heaven. And then he was carrying a big bag. And then, and then <clears throat> when he got to the pearly gate, and then he met St. Peter. And he said, well, he is coming to heaven. And then Peter said to him, but what are you carrying? He said, well, I said to bring my silver and gold, just in case if I need it. I am carrying my silver and gold that I acquired in the world, so I want to bring it into heaven, just in case if I need it. And Peter looked at him. And Peter called an angel. I said, come, somebody is carrying a lot of concrete here. Because in heaven, what they use, I'm using the word concrete, because if I use the word asphalt, many of you will not understand it, but asphalt is actually what they use to do the road. You know the black thing you drive for? It's called asphalt. It's called tar. Amen? So Peter looked at the angel and said, please, somebody's carrying a lot of asphalt to come here. What does he need it for? Because the street of heaven is made with gold. That is the beginning. The streets of heaven is what? made of gold. And so you can't beat that. I suppose some people, when they will make it to heaven, they, when they make it to heaven, early in the morning, they will go out and start chiseling something on the road. <laughs> I know some, some people may try that. Praise the Lord. You know, you know, uh, <laughs> I've heard about people that traveled abroad, especially Nigerians, as they got there, they say, oh, there's light. They brought out their clothes. What do you want? I want to my clothes because they take light. They say, please, please, you are not in a place where they will take light. <laughs> Praise the Lord. He said, no, but let me iron them now because I don't want the light to go. And so when we get to heaven, there are people that will still wake up in the morning and then they will go to chase the streets and hide in their, in their room just in case. <laughs> Praise the Lord. But God is bigger than your imagination, richer than your comprehension. Amen. And so when we talk about how to receive anything from God, you need to understand the principle that is involved. I just told you one, you need to be in his family by getting born again. Two, you need to know that God owns these things and he commands these things. Praise the Lord. He commands them. 
Praise the Lord. Those are the two steps. Then number three, you have to understand that God does not start anybody with the big things. God starts every man with the little things. Praise the Lord. Are you hearing me? In Zechariah 4.10, he says, he says, who will despise the days of little beginning? Amen? Amen. Who will despise? Many of us don't like to start small. We want to start big just because you graduated from school. You said you are looking for a job that gives you a chauffeur-driven car, accommodation, lake Eve. You want to live in the high places, in the high broad areas. God starts all his children with little things. You need to understand that. And yet, that is where many fail. That is where many fail. There is more willingness in the part of God to give than there is more willingness on your part to receive. Know that God is a giver. That's important. God is what? A giver. And he gives what? Generously and he gives the best. John 3, 16. For God so loved the world. For God so loved the world that he gave his only, his only, his only begotten son. No. He's got one son. He gave one son. He gave him to save me. He gave him to save us. So God is an addicted giver. He loves to give. Before he gave his son, listen, before he gave his son, he gave from the beginning covenant with Abraham. He says, I make a covenant with you. My covenant I will not break. And then he found out that though God is a faithful God, men were breaking the covenant. And so then he introduced the law. He said, then if you follow the law, you will leave. And then men were not able to follow the law. Then he sent the prophet. He said, okay, if I can bring one from their midst that will speak to them in their language, they will probably understand. Since I have made a covenant with them, the covenant did not work. And then I brought the law, and the law made not imperfect. And so I bring prophet. Let me bring prophet to speak to them. And, and they did not believe the prophet. And some of them, they even killed. And God said, okay, what do I do now? Hmm, what do I do now? There's one more thing I want to do. God said, I will send my only begotten son. If anybody will believe, anybody, first, he was dealing with the children of Abraham, children of Isaac, children of Jacob, who is Israel. Many people think that when they talk about children of Israel, they are being spiritual. When you talk about children of Israel, you're talking about the children of a man. Praise the Lord. The children of what? A man. Jacob, his name was changed to Israel. And so, when you talk about the children of Israel, you're not being spiritual. And unfortunately, some people try to look at it that way, that when they say they are children of Israel, or when they say they go to Israel, and they pray in Israel, and they bring water from Israel, and they do that, and they do that, they do that, and then you will be blessed and all that. And all that. Some people will even say that they, will brought, they brought the bone of the apostles. Praise the Lord. Now, let me tell you, those things are categorically rubbish. Water from Israel does not do any better than the water from River Niger. It's the same water. Are you hearing me? The bone of the apostles and your own bone is the same. Did you hear what I just said? You know, don't be fooled. God broke the barriers after the crucifixion when Jesus died. And, and he was buried. The barriers that, that separate the Jews from the Gentiles was broken. And now God said, if anyone, no matter where you are coming from, no matter where you are born, anyone will believe, you'll be saved. 
God said, there is no more differences. All of us have equal opportunity. We have equal opportunity to serve God. And if you will believe, God will deal with you like he will deal with the children of Israel. By the way, Israel is still struggling to accept Jesus as their Messiah. No, do you understand that? They are still struggling. The majority of Israel, they are, you know, that is why now we have the Messiah, Messianic Jews. Those are those that have believed that Jesus is the Messiah. And so they are different from the ordinary Jews. But I want you to know that faith and belief in Jesus is what you need to join the family of God. And as you join that family of God, you have access to the commonwealth. Bible calls it in the book of Ephesians. It says the commonwealth of Israel. You become part of the commonwealth of Israel. Amen. So God has the resources. God is a giver. God is willing to give. Amen. God is willing to give. The Bible says something to us. And I think I would like to just read that before. It says in Psalm 84. For the Lord God is a son and shield. The Lord bestows grace and favor and honor. He bestows. The Lord bestows grace and favor and honor. Amen. If you read the last line, you'll be happy. He says, no good thing. Psalms 84 verses 11 and 12. He says, no good thing will he withhold from those who walk uprightly. Amen. No good thing. Remember, we started by saying that every good thing and every perfect gift comes from God. And now David says, no good thing. The Lord will not withhold any good thing from those that are upright. By the way, who is an upright person? An upright person is not a person that is morally correct. An upright person is the one that is born again born of God, that have received the gift of righteousness. Praise the Lord. That's an upright person. Amen? Praise the Lord. No good thing will he withhold from those who walk upright. So you need to understand that God is more than willing to give. If you look at Luke chapter 12, Luke chapter 12, verse 32. I am reading from the New Living Translation. Luke chapter 12, verse 32. From the New Living Translation. It says, So don't be afraid, little flock, for it gives your father great happiness to give you the kingdom. Shout hallelujah. Wow. Don't be afraid, little flock. Don't be afraid. It gives your father, it gives our father great joy. It gives him what? Great joy. To do what? To give us, to give us the kingdom. If it gives him joy to bless us, don't you think that if we're not blessed, it's our fault? If somebody is willing to give and you don't receive from that person, the problem is not from the giver, the problem is from the receiver. Amen? How many of you have seen DSTV? DSTV. What do you need to watch it? Sorry? Subscribe. Receiver. Decoder. What do you need to receive DSTV? Praise the Lord. You get a dish. Right? You get a dish, isn't it? Praise the Lord. If you have TV in your house, even though you have TV, you cannot get DSTV, isn't it? You put it on, it will not work, isn't it? You need to buy a dish. You need to buy a dish. And then after you have bought the dish, you need to buy a decoder also. Praise the Lord. Will it work? Will it work? It will not work. Why will it not work? Ah! A what? Why don't you just go put it on your wall now? Why 
religious spirit on your wall. You see, that's the problem. When you have paid for the dish, and then you pay for the decoder, you need and what installer to do what to install it correctly. Praise the Lord. To install it what correctly. And so when you get born again, and then you get to a church, you need a pastor to guide you correctly. Amen. And you can get the wrong installer. You can also attend to a wrong person that will pastor you. Or so many things called church that is not church. That's why we now say we saw living church. Living church. Praise the Lord. So if you buy the satellite dish and you buy the decoder, it will not work. You will need an installer and he needs to come to your house and install it through a phone. And then your TV is connected to the DSTV, isn't it? And you can watch. It is exactly the same process with spiritual things. Did you hear what I said? It's exactly the same thing. When you get born again, Thank God that you are born again. You are a Christian. But you need to belong to a church. Thank God that you find a church where you attend. But you need to become a member rooted and planted. Are you hearing me? You need to be rooted and planted in the local church for you to become what do I call, let me call a committed Christian. And then as you begin to receive the word of the Lord and the word of the Lord begins to work in you, as the word begins to work in you, the word begins to leave you. As the word enters into you, the word will depart from you. It is a process. It is a process. The more word, the less word. The more word, the less word. You come to a point where you are filled with the fullness of God. And the world have no place in you. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. And the world have no place in you. Praise the Lord. You see, if you don't, if you don't, the world will keep competing with the world. Did you hear? The world will compete with the word of God. And then you come to church, you hear, God said, study my word. And then the world say, why do you need to study? And so the world will try to neutralize or dilute whatever the word says in your life. And so it becomes a struggle. You don't know who to believe. Whatever the word says to you, the world will try to counter it. That was the fall of man in the Garden of Eden. When the devil said, did God say you should not touch this fruit? Did God say you should not? When the world begins to question the word of God, that shows where you are standing. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. For us to receive from God, we need to follow the process that DSTV follows or any other company follows. True or false? Yes. You buy the dish, you buy the decoder, and then you get an installer. You get born again, you join a living church, and then you have a pastor over you. That qualifies you to learn and to follow the way of God. You know why? When it comes to the things of the Spirit, listen, when it comes to the things of the Spirit, nobody has been there before. Amen? When you get born again, it's a new life for you. It is a new way for you when you get born again. And so you need a teacher to guide you on how to enjoy the benefits of salvation. You need a teacher. And it is through the teaching of the word of God that you gain understanding. How many of you attended school here? You attended school here. If you went to any school, let me see your hand. You went to school. 
Praise the Lord. Did you wear school uniform in your life? School uniform. Why? You paid to go to school, right? And then they say that you will have wear this funny design, funny colors. Isn't it? Whether you like it or not, you will wear it, isn't it? Why? Why? How many of you, you went to school anytime you wanted? Of course, I know there are people like, let me not ask that. <laughs> Praise the Lord, because I know that some of you did that. Amen? And brother, that's why you didn't finish. Amen. <clears throat> but those of you that went to proper school, I mean, normal students goes to school when they school. If it's 8 o'clock, you need to be in school 8 o'clock, isn't it? And you will stay till whatever is the time. You stay till that time. If you go before that time, what happens to you? Sorry? You are flogged, you are punished. If you go before that time, what happens to you? They will flog you. They will punish you. And you paid. Right? And you paid. Why do you walk out of church when Saturday is still going on? And you didn't pay? No, just, you see, when we talk about receiving from God, let us deal with ourselves. Amen? You can just get up and then, why shall we leave and say, excuse me, excuse me, leave me. And you walk out. And God is looking at you. You are walking out on me. You are walking out on me. And then in the night, we start midnight prayer. All oh, my enemies, I bind you with fire. I pour kerosene on you. I burn you. All oh, my enemies, you must die. Where did they say that prayer? Praise the Lord. That is why the Bible says, man, people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Listen, listen. Let me say this. Let me say this. The devil is a less problem than your lawlessness. The devil is not the main problem of the Christian. The major, major problem of the Christian is ignorance. Many of you don't read the Bible. That's a problem. Amen? Should I do a test? How many of you read the Bible this week? You opened it. Not to read Psalm 23. Or the Lord's Prayer. How many of you, you actually read the Bible this week? Two chapters. You know, let's not go far. Why? Why? Just two verses. Two verses. You see? And yet, the devil is a specialist to keep us from knowing what the word of God says. The devil knows that the moment you know what the word of God says and you begin to walk in it, the devil cannot stop you. Are you hearing me? Because all the blessings of the Lord is coded in his word. It's coded in his word. God is not a magician. Praise the Lord. And I said to you, Everything starts small with God and grows from there. Everything. Our bishop, blessed with the host, our blessed memory, we were blessed to sit under him, to learn from him, to hear him taught us. Praise the Lord. He says, there is only one thing that starts from the top. Only one thing starts from the top. What is it? The grave is the only thing that starts from the top and elsewhere. But everything else, Everything else starts from there, starts from bottom, and goes up. Are you hearing me? And so, he says, despise not the days of little beginning. You got a job in the company, you are a graduate, and they say, we are looking for a cleaner. Take the job of a cleaner instead of sleeping at home. Are you hearing me? Sitting at home and believing God for food and getting a job as a clean, which one is better? There are many people in the history of corporate America, even in Nigeria, that have started as cleaner and ended up as CEO. And that is in the world, with the world. That's with the world. 
They started as cleaners and they ended at the top. Many like that. Many like that. Amen. Don't you understand that being a cleaner gives you access to everywhere in the office where anybody else cannot go? You go to the office of the CEO. You go to the office of the finance director, the slave director. Are you hearing me? Finance director. You go to all their offices, you clean, you see the way they live. And by seeing the way they live, you see the one that when he drinks, he scatters everywhere. He says, I don't want to be like this man. Amen. And so by being a cleaner, you have access to where nobody else has access. And so you come to know the company more than any other person. Praise the Lord. They spice not the days of little beginning. You can start as a cleaner and desire to be the boss of the place. There's nothing wrong with that. When you start small, does not mean you will end small. You can start small with a big dream. You can start small with a big desire. And then Jesus said to us in Luke chapter 16, which we studied last Sunday. Jesus said to us that <laughs> if you are not faithful with a righteous mammon, Jesus said, who will give you eternal riches? Jesus was educating about receiving the blessings of the Lord. He says, if you are not faithful, and then I want to say to you that after you are born again, after you get the understanding and the knowledge of who God is and what God can do, you need to build up your life on faithfulness. On faith God loves faithful people. If you can mix desire and faithfulness together, believe me, you'll be a success with God. If you will mix up desire, you have a strong desire, a strong desire, and you are faithful in accomplishing what is given to you, you will make it with God. Remember, when I talk about making it, it's not about just getting money. Don't get it wrong, bro. Getting it is, or making it is, being in where God wants you to be. Shout hallelujah. The moment you are where God wants you to be, you will not like any good thing. You cannot be denied anything. Shout hallelujah. That is so important. So important. Faithfulness. Jesus said, if you are not faithful with money, nobody will give you spiritual gifts. That's what Jesus said. So, he says, if you are not faithful with unrighteous money, he said, who will give you the true riches? So, that is dealing with the gift of the Spirit. Is that correct? When it comes to the blessing, the physical blessing, Jesus said, if you are not faithful with another man's things, this is, you see, there are two things Jesus showed us how to receive. How to receive spiritual gift. He said, if you want to receive spiritual things, Jesus said, you have a righteous mammon. You have money. Money, right? Now, when Jesus talks about money, let me tell you, your qualification falls into it because you got that with money. Amen? Your skills, the training you got, you got that with money. Jesus said, if you are not faithful, if you are not faithful with those things you have acquired with a righteous mammon, Jesus said, who will give you the gifts of the Spirit? Let me pray like that. But when it comes to the physical blessings, the physical wealth, 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 Jesus said to us, if you are not faithful, if you are not faithful in another man's own, it doesn't matter whether the person is a Christian or not. Are you hearing me? It doesn't matter if he's a harsh master or not. As long as you are set to work in that place, full stop, God expects you to be faithful. So we have, let's open to look. Shout hallelujah. Because the way you are looking at me, you just said, Pastor said, Pastor said, I want you to say it. Praise the Lord. Amen. 
Luke chapter 16, 12 verse 10. Luke chapter 16, verse 10. I am reading from the New Living Translation. And I want you to underline those because this is your secret to receive both spiritual gift and physical gift is the secret here. And it's not from the prophet, it's from Jesus. It's not from pastor. When we get something from Jesus, it's the high, he is the highest authority when it comes to the word of God and the things of the Spirit and to everything on earth. Jesus is the final authority. And if Jesus said this is the way, we should follow that way. Praise the Lord. If Jesus said this is how you get it, follow that way. Now, Luke chapter 16, verse 10. If you are faithful in little things, you will be faithful in large ones. But if you are dishonest in little things, you won't be honest with greater responsibilities. Praise the Lord. Verse 11. And if you are untrustworthy about worldly wealth, if you are untrustworthy about worldly wealth, you say, who will trust you with the true riches of heaven? That establishes how to receive spiritual gifts. You need to be faithful. You need to be, I cannot emphasize this enough. I cannot emphasize that. You need to be faithful with the little things. You need to be faithful with the money that you have gotten, that you have right now. You have to be faithful. There are people that are wasters. Wasters. Amen. I mean, you don't have a job, or you are a student. You are carrying a phone of hundred fifty thousand naira. You should be arrested. Simple. Listen, you don't have a job. You don't have a job. You are a student, and you carry a phone of hundred fifty thousand. Are you hearing me? Praise the Lord. You carry a phone. 150,000. You say, Pastor, it's a gift. Sell it and start business with it. Now, are you hearing me? There is no way you can explain to God that you are handling a phone of 150,000 naira. Or let me use this, let me say it another way around. And I said it before. And I said it two weeks ago, two weeks ago. That's what they call iPhone 14, right? iPhone 14 just came out. And then they said there's iPhone 14 Pro Max. How much is it here? Sorry? One point, even to hear one point is enough for you to turn away from it. You, you say it cost one point what? 1.8 million naira. 1.8 million naira. I learned that uh, in Germany it's about 1,300, 1,400 euro, which always was about one point something million. I learned that. Listen, listen. If you are a worker, if you are a worker and you buy it, you should be arrested. No, listen to me. I, am, I, I want to teach you. I want to teach you how to make it God's way. God does not bless Westerners. You can never explain to God enough why. You use 1.8 million. Even 1 million alone is afraid to go and buy phone. What does the phone do? Does it give you food? 
No, does it, fo- does it feed you? You are telling me 1.7 million. And some people say, uh, Pastor, there are people that money is nothing. Let me tell you, every hardworking person, that money is something. Are you hearing me? Every hardworking person, that money is something. How many of you have heard the name Warren Buffett? Warren Buffett. He's one of the richest guys in America today. And he's a great investor. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And this guy, is, he's, he's an expert with money. He went to buy a car. Not that they told me I had it from him. He went to buy a car. He went to the car shop. He looked at all the cars. Very expensive. He said he saw one. You know what they call hair storm? Hair storm is when it's like bubbles of stone. But his eyes actually that fall from the sky. And then the, the force can hit a car so well. It can dent the car much more. You know, dent it much more. Not a big damage. So it's called hell's storm when it happens. That. So, so as Warren Buffett was looking for a car around, and he saw the one, this jeep that was put aside. And then he went and said, what is the problem with this? And the, the owner of the guy said, oh, it's hell's storm. Hell storm damaged it and all that. He said, so, so why are you putting it there? He said, well, it's on a special discount. He said, how much? The richest man, one of the richest men in the U.S. And they told him, he said, I will take it. And the man looked at him and said, what? He said, I will take it. He said, well, you, you, you can buy. You, you can buy. He said, no, 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 this is good. It is still driving. Praise the Lord. Do you sleep in the car? No, do you sleep in the car? And he bought it. And he said he got a good saving on it. So I had this story also. This one I was told. And I believe it's also about Warren Buffett. He went and bought a a wife, a brand new car. Praise the Lord. And then brought the car home. The wife was in the kitchen. Said to the wife, honey, I bought you a brand new car. The wife was busy. I'll tell you what the wife was doing. The wife was busy. The wife looked, oh, you bought me a brand new car. Thank you, dear. And he, she continued. And he was a bit surprised. And so he decided to come close to see what the wife was doing. And he came. And the wife was cutting her food stamps. The, the, you know the discount they give, they give or coupons, catalogs. The wife was, <laughs> the wife was cutting that ten percent discount, fifteen percent discount, on full stop, and was piecing them together. The wife of Warren Buffett was doing that, and the husband came close. Said, "What are you doing?" He said, "I'm collecting these stamps together because I want to go and buy food to feed the poor." And the husband said, "You didn't even jump out to see the car." He said, but the car is not running away, honey. But this is urgent. This is urgent. When you are trying to prove that you are something, you already prove that you are nothing. Because those that are something, they don't need proof. Shout hallelujah. They don't need proof. Verse 11, Luke 16. And if you are untrustworthy about worldly wealth, who will trust you with the true riches of heaven? Verse 12. And if you are not faithful with other people's things, oh, if you are not faithful with other people's things, why should you be trusted with things of your own? Why? And then in verse 13, faithfulness. No one can serve two masters. For you will hate one and love the other. 
You will be devoted to one and despite the other. You cannot serve God and be enslaved to money. This is new living. You cannot serve God and be enslaved to money. And so, you have a summary. In a nutshell, you have a summary of what it takes to make it. Are you hearing me? Unfortunately, one thing you will not see here is praying and fasting to make it. And I'm sure that would disappoint some of you. Because maybe you have gotten used to seven days dry fasting. You have gotten used to maybe three days dry fasting because you, listen, I believe in fasting. We fast here also. Every Wednesday this month we've been fasting. And beyond that, I fast. Praise the Lord. I'm not against fasting. But when you fast, fast with understanding. Shout hallelujah. I believe towards the ending of the year, before we do our praying and fasting, I will teach about the right kind of fasting so that you can do it properly. Praise the Lord. The sad thing is that you will not see prayer and fasting to make it or to be blessed. You won't see it. You will not see it. You know why you will not see it? Many of us here, we are parents. We have children, isn't it? Isn't it? How many of you that your child will come to you fasting for you to pay his school fees? Think about it. To pay the school fees of your son, he has to fast three days to come to you. No, do you understand what I'm saying? No, are you getting me? You have to be a wicked person for him to do that. And he will tell everybody, my father is not a normal person. And sometimes this is the picture we give about God, that for God to bless you, you need to fast through. You need to pray through. You need to do that. Listen, listen, listen. This morning, this morning, as I was just sitting, getting ready, I mean, I was already ready, I was in there. Suddenly, you know, I had a knock on my door. Before I even say, boom, my little boy dashed in. Hey, knock. How are you? I'm fine, daddy. I'm fine. I'm fine. He looked around, looked around. He said, this place is smelling like biscuit. I said, hey, knock. <laughs> there is no biscuit smelling here. He said, but this place is smelling like biscuit. That I said, you want biscuit? He said, yes. Are you hearing me? I needed my privacy. I needed my time. So what do I do? I just went, took the biscuit, and I gave to him. I said, see you after service. He said, bye-bye, daddy. He was gone. Praise the Lord. I gave that biscuit so quickly so that he can leave me alone. Are you hearing me? Because if I didn't give that biscuit, that visit, do you think that God enjoyed? <laughs> My house went. <laughs> what? <laughs> no, you think that God enjoys it? He says, come into his presence with thanksgiving. And then every time you come, <laughs> <laughs> What is it? What is it? What is it? I don't have person. I don't have help. What is it? Won't the person walk away? If it's me, I'll walk away. And this is what we have done God to. Three days fast, seven days fast. Do you know what fast is? Fast is a honeymoon with the Lord. Those that are married know what honeymoon is. But those of you that are not married, you have watched honeymoon on TV. Have you not? Have you not? And so when you are dreaming, I want to go to Dubai for my honeymoon. 
Huh? Why? Fasting is honeymoon with the Lord. You want to spend time with God. And in spending time with the Lord, it's not about shopping lists. Lord, give me this. Lord, give me that. 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 No. No. You come into his presence. You say, what a good God you are. I have searched through all eternity, oh, and found there is none like you. And you are talking to the Lord like that from the depth of your heart. Have you, uh, how many of you have been to a wedding recently? Went to a wedding recently? You saw the, remember the boy that played talking drum? The people that play talking drum, they, they go to a wedding where there's wedding. They don't need to know anybody. Praise the Lord. When you come out of your car, they, will, they, they monitor those that they will play. They don't play for every, day, you know, I mean, when they see the dust on your shoes, they will pass you by. Praise the Lord. True, it's all what they do. When they see you with two handkerchiefs and dealing with sweat, and sweat is dealing with you, and my shoe is already looking brown, they will pass you. They will see a small boy from Mercedes. Hey! The Prince of Lagos. Money controller. The chief of Agege. The guy will. A small boy, you, you see know him. They walk past you. Pass you because of disabled wallet. Are you hearing me? And they saw a small boy. You are mature enough to be his father. Even when you look around, you see the way they were praising, you say, Lord, you remember me. <laughs> and as they are playing that talking drum, the guy will bring that money through or false. What does he do? That is, that is a carnal man in the flesh. And you are telling me you will come into the presence of Jehovah with praise and thanksgiving. And Jesus said, he knows all that we need even before we ask. And so you will stay there for one hour you are singing praise. For two hours you are singing praise. And you say you will leave that place the same. It's not possible now. Praise the Lord. It's not possible now. Are you hearing me? And so, we are ignorant about who God is. That is another problem. We don't know him. We don't know his nature. We don't know his kindness. We don't know his love. You know what they have taught us? They have taught us prayer warfare. Amen? And so, we are experienced prayer what? Demon busters, demon casters. And they have programmed us to think God the hard way. I mean, but meanwhile, God is a loving God. He anticipates the need even before it arises. Amen. He anticipates, you know, this weekend, this weekend is the beginning of October, isn't it? So Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, we are going to have a seminar, Secret of Supernatural Health. Praise the Lord. We're, we're going to have three days program, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And it's going to be how to live a life without sickness or disease. Let me put it like that, where it will be clear to everybody. Are you hearing me? How to live a life without what? Sickness and disease. How to live a sickness-free, disease-free life. Is it possible? Yes. Is it possible? Yes. Do you pray for it? No. That's a problem. Do you fast for it? No. That's a problem. It's too easy for you to believe. But it's true. 
please, please, I beg you, make time to attend that conference, that seminar. Friday, Saturday, Sunday, three days on how to have a life without sickness or disease. You can have it for free. For free, you can have it. For free, you can live it. I called my uncle last week. We spoke. And as their wife just picked up the phone, they are in the US. Oh, she said to me, Ah, Pastor, we are fine. We are just having old people's sickness and disease. I said, There is nothing. I know they wouldn't believe if I said, but I just said to myself, There's nothing like old people's sickness and disease. Otherwise, it would have been in the Bible. Amen. Praise the Lord. It would have been in the Bible. Now, I'm sharing with you how you can receive anything from God. And amazingly, you didn't say fast. You didn't say pray. And Jesus told us, this is a secret for you to receive spiritual things. This is the secret for you to receive physical things. Simple. How many of you remember a man called Jacob? Hello? Come on, do you know him? All right, let's go to Genesis. Genesis 31. We'll soon close. Because I want to stick to time because of next Sunday. Amen. Remember Jacob? He had a problem with his brother, right? And so he ran away. When he ran away, where did he go to? <laughs> Let's say it this way, because that's the way it is. He went to his uncle. <laughs> Amen? Jacob ran away from his brother and went to stay with the uncle because the brother wanted to kill him because he took the blessings of the brother. Let's not go into that. But let's just go to where he went to the brother. And as he went to, the, uh, as he went to his uncle, he lived with his uncle. Jacob lived with his uncle. And he served his uncle. And when he served his uncle, God blessed him. God gave him his own. I want to, because of time, I want to just take it from Jacob now left his uncle because he realized that his uncle was never happy with him, was not happy with him again. So Jacob left the uncle with his two wives and with his children and with his livestock. He left without telling the uncle. Are you hearing me? He ran away. Are we there? Now let's read from Genesis chapter 31 from verse 36. This is where the uncle was pursuing Jacob after Jacob has run away. Okay? So this is where he met Jacob on the way. Are you getting it now? When he met Jacob. Jacob now was angry. Now, that was when Jacob told his own story about service. Sometimes we don't hear other person's story because they don't have opportunity to speak. But there is always opportunity with God. Praise the Lord. So, let's read from verse 36. Genesis 31, verse, from verse 36. Then Jacob was angry and rebuked Laban. Now he is not in his house anymore, so he has authority to rebuke him. And Jacob answered and said to Laban, What is my trespass? What is my sin that you have so hotly pursued me? Is that in your Bible? Jacob wasn't happy. He was being pursued like a criminal. So he's asking Laban, What have I done to you? What is my sin? What is my offense? Why are you pursuing me like a criminal? Verse 37. Although you have searched all my things, what part of your household things have you found? Set it here before my brethren and your brethren, that they may judge between us both. Jacob said, if you say I stole your things, you have searched all the things. I mean, it's not easy to come to a family man and violate his privacy and search everything. It's a humiliation. But Jacob took it all. 
He took it, the indignation, the insult. But after that, he got angry now because now he has been proven right. So he said, what is it? Verse 38. Listen now. And I want you to follow me correctly and mark your Bible with this. He says, these 20 years, these 20 years I have been with you. You are ewes and your female goat have not miscarried their young. And I have not eaten the rams of your flock. Verse 39. That which was torn by beasts I did not bring to you. I bought the loss of it. You required it from my hand, whether stolen by day or stolen by night. Verse 14. There I was in the day, the drought consumed me, and the frost by night, and my sleep departed from my eyes. This is a man talking about how he was, he was abused and taken advantage of by his uncle, not an outsider. Verse 14. For, sorry, verse 41. He said, Thus, I've been in your house 20 years. I served you 14 years for your two daughters and six years for your flock. And you have changed my wages 10 times. You changed my salary 10 times. Are you hearing me? The, you know, if you are to add this on Nollywood, mommy will cry when, when you start talking. Praise the Lord. If you, seriously, if you act it on Nollywood, you know, mommy and Elizabeth will cry when you start giving this type of report. And they will call the other man a wicked person. They will forget it's a movie. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let me read it again. He said, thus, I have been in your house 20 years. I served you 14 years for your two daughters and six years for your flock. And you have changed my Shout hallelujah. Jacob is saying, Jacob is saying, if not for the sake of my father's God, the God of Isaac, he was trying to say, listen, Laban, after all this labor, after all my service, you would have let me empty-handed. If not God has said, I will not be poor. You change the rules. You change my wages. You change the wife I'm supposed to get. You change everything. You manipulated me. You cheated me. He said, 20 years. Listen, you, you are only there for two years and you want to break down the whole place. God will never allow a faithful person go unrewarded. Write it in your notebook. It's not possible because that would be to break his word. Amen? That would be to break his word. God will never let a faithful person go unrewarded. It's not possible. It's not his nature. He cannot do it. He cannot do it. Shout hallelujah. Never. And so when Jacob was serving faithfully, 